Hey, Lord of the Rings fans, New Better Do Better here, and I'm here with my breakdown of episode four of season two of The Rings of Power. Now, this is going to be very spoiler heavy, so if you haven't seen the episode, drop a like, leave, and come back after you watch the episode. I'll give you a few seconds. Five, four, three, two... One, let's get into it. Guys, I absolutely loved this episode. I'm so glad that um, the episodes are being like very consistent as far as likability, uh, as far as pacing, um, as far as lore. Now, this episode in particular is heavy with the lore, heavy with references, and I really enjoyed it. I give it the second best episode out of the four so far, so that is very high rated. Number two is the best one for me, and this one is, is right behind it. Now... We start off with um, uh, in a couple different places, but let's talk about let's talk about the stranger who's in Rune and he's searching for the two Harfoots that he's swept off into the tornado that he he made, and um, he runs into none other than Tom Bombadil. Now I love how they portrayed Tom Bombadil. I was very apprehensive. I was very like I don't know how they're gonna do Tom, but I loved his depiction. I loved it. Um, only. Only critique I would say is two things. Uh, his colors were, are a bit muted. I wish they were a little louder and brighter. Um, and that, that is what it is. That's not a deal breaker. And I wish he was a little more uh, joyous and, and boisterous and loud. But beside that, they're spot on. Dialect, spot on. The references, he, he, he talks about he's the eldest. He, he's, you know, the throwback that they have of talking about um, old man Willow with the tree when it swallows up the, when it swallows up the, the stranger, the wit the wizard. Excellent, man. Hey, go to sleep. You shouldn't be waking. Dig deep. I, yo, that is spot on. Um, you know, he's, he's, he talks about his water lilies. He also, Tom Bombadillo is a Mario. Yo, they do that excellently. Like I said, I wish he would just sung it louder and more bo joyous and he was, you know, skipping around a little more, but I think they wanted to bring him down to a more, um, you know, a, a more real level, I, you know what I'm saying? In the storytelling, they didn't want to be too silly with it and then make it seem like it doesn't connect with the rest of the, the world building that's going on. So I understand it. Um, he's talking to Goldberry in there. Goldberry is there. He's talking to her. It's mwah, chef's kiss. I really love it. Also, if you guys aren't paying attention, we know a lot of people were concerned. Why is Tom Bombadil in Rune? He tells you, hey, I, things were out back with, by the Withy Window, where he's from in the old forest. But I heard that the green, you know, room used to be green and it started dying. So I came here to investigate. Excellent tie-in. Excellent tie-in. Another excellent tie-in. I loved how they had, uh, you know, Tom tell him, hey, it ain't my job. To, this ain't my thing, man. You handle that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, do what you do. And I think I'm going to... Go out on a limb here and change my prediction that the wizard is Gandalf. I'm going to change it that he might be a blue wizard. And what I think they're going to be doing is changing the wizards to be one good blue wizard, one bad blue wizard that square off against each other. And they're trying to one is trying to prevent Sauron from arising and the other is trying to help Sauron for uh, arise. So I think that's what they're doing there. I'm going to go on record and saying I was wrong in that prediction. But everything else I was saying... Absolutely right, which I absolutely love. So now let's get into Elrond, Galadriel. They're still having their struggle back and forth about the ring and the path they take. This was absolutely gorgeous. We see them traveling through Eriador, east through Eriador in the landscapes. It reminded me of the original Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings where it's very uh, world building and beautiful and the landscapes were, were, were magnificent and then they come to the Barrow Downs and we get the Barrow Whites and they explain the Barrow Whites and why the Barrow Whites are awake and that those mounds are ancient. If you did not know, it is lore accurate that the Barrows were there long before the men of Arnor were there and started using some of the mounds to bury their lords and their kings and so that is little accurate. Now, it says that Sauron uh, woke up these rites and, and made them awake to stop their, you know, path through there. And he also, uh, he also made them go through there. He, he blocked off this thing or did that. And so Sauron's moving behind the scenes so tremendously, so excellently. It's also, we also find out what happens to our messengers. It was the Barrowites, like I predicted. So I'm not, I'm not upset at all for being, uh, you know, which I haven't, it hasn't been proven that I was wrong about Gandalf, but I'm 
totally cool with being wrong about things. Um, it makes for great conversation. Um, but I love, I love when I get predictions right. And that's something that I said. I said it was the Burrow Whites and Sauron woke them up. People were questioning it. Sauron, uh, I mean, not Sauron, Sauron. Um, absolutely is a necromancer and he probably taught the witch king his necromancy very cool um, we go and we, we follow Theo and we follow around there and Theo is captured we saw him get attacked by something we kind of figured it was an int and it was an int and an int wide we get a close up view of them they look amazing and um, we I love how they that the chopping of the tree it shows because they're not just going to randomly attack and it, it's showing hey you guys are felling trees and he's very they're very angry and wrathful right now I said they're being hasty I said they're being hasty but we see them calm down we see that around is able to speak to them and bring them back down and cool them off and you know the sadness that are in their eyes and it talks about this and and we see at Entwi for the first time you know really really up close and and we know that it's going to get crazy for the Entwives and I'm here for it I don't want it to happen but to that story for that story to be told I am I'm absolutely like beyond excited we also are following a door and we're following uh the young lady i can't remember her name right now but uh you know she was under the influence of uh the people that are following adar and so you know there's a a, a struggle there between her around there and a door uh whether they can trust her or not we get something very cool we get a nameless thing we get a nameless thing that is deep in the bowels of this bog. And Aranda is like, yo, in, in the deep places of the world, there are nameless things. Now, I want you guys to understand, this is absolute canon. This is not something, oh, they're only supposed to be in Khazad Doom. That is not what's going on. That's not what's written. It's just in the deep places of the world. Nameless things aren't only in the bowels of Khazad Doom. They are all over. There are things that that have no names that that stain the blood, um, stain the, uh, the the earth with the blood long before the rising of the sun and the moon. And they they, they walk around and they, they ivory and horn monsters of of various shapes and many eyes. And these is all spoken about in the Silmarillion and other various works of J.R.R. Tolkien. So nameless things are creatures that are just so old and unknown, and they dwell in the deep and dark places of the world and so this creature being one of them is not not canon it's actually more accurate because they speak of these things many times in the lord of the rings they're they're in different places nandan gotheb they're in other places you know i'm sure in the bowels of angband and utumno and and other places in in the world in general there are nameless things so absolutely that's right on brand so i really enjoyed this episode um you know I really love how they're tying things together. Um, let me talk about Galadriel and her in the ring for a second. Um, I think she wants Elrond to trust her, but Elrond just can't reconcile with it right now. I think he's going to have to see something extraordinary with the ring and, and, and to establish trust with her. But right now, he just can't reconcile with it. It's a little annoying, but uh, I think it's going somewhere. So it's going somewhere. We see her finally use the ring for good. We see her use the ring for to heal and then we let's get into the battle with galadriel and the orcs absolutely magnificent galadriel does a great job but one thing i'm going to critique this show about is they're not showing her using her power as far as magic goes enough we need to establish that and 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 that's part of her repertoire now i know they probably are like hey let's draw back on that until later but this is something that needs to be brought to the forefront now, uh, because it, it's talked about in the, in the, the works. So it's something I like to see coupled with her ability to fight, which is absolutely also something J.R.R. Tolkien had in mind. Uh, Galadriel being able to be a warrior and be a fighter. And, and you know, remember she, uh, led a force to Dol Guldur multiple times, uh, and, and threw it down. So she absolutely was capable of, of anything that any of the males was able to do. And she was, she was absolutely that, um, but besides that critique, I thought the excellent was uh, the, I thought the episode was excellent. Uh, well done. I really enjoyed it. It gave us an abundance of things, and I'm sure there's things I'm missing right now. But that is my recap of uh, episode four of season two of The Rings of Power. So I give that episode uh, an eight out of ten. I give it an eight out of ten. It was excellent. It was done really well. I really enjoyed it. All right, all right, guys. Make sure you comment, uh, share your thoughts, like, and uh, you know. Just spread the word. Rings of Power Season 2 is actually really, really strong. Really, really good. And you're missing out if you're not watching it. Peace.